Hey guys, I'm back with macromolecules, the building blocks of life, and this macromolecule we're going to be talking about today are lipids. Now, two characteristics you need to know about lipids, first of all, they are hydrophobic, which means hydro is water, phobic is fearing, so they have a hydrophobic beha behavior, that's why when you mix oil and water, they don't go together, and they consist of hydrocarbons, and you oftentimes think of hydrocarbons and hydrophobic as going hand in hand. Now, the functions of a lipid, the main functions are energy storage. You know, fats are used to store energy. They actually store two times more energy than carbohydrates do. And the other one is insulation. You know, think about blubber in whales. Um, they serve to insulate the whale from the cold. You know, and they also, that insulation, that layer of um, lipids can act as a cushioning layer for, from organs. So... You know, if you were coming to punch me in my stomach, it wouldn't hurt me as much as if you hit someone that's really skinny. Um, now, we think of lipids they are made up of three compounds, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and they consist of three different family group members. Fats, which can be either saturated or unsaturated, phospholipids, and steroids. We're going to talk about each one of these groups before we move on to, um, to the next organic molecule. Um, Lipids do not form polymers. That means polymers are long chains of monomers put together. They're not a continuous chain as the other macromolecules are. So that makes lipids kind of unique, that they're not this long form of polymers. Now, saturated fats, let's look at those first. Saturated fats means that every carbon structure has a hydrogen on it. So if we look at it, it will be like this. If we have a carbon, we have hydrogens attached to each one and on down the line. Oh, there are no double bonds in a saturated fat. Okay, they're all single bond. It's a long straight chain. Most animal fats are like this, and if you have a saturated fat, it's actually solid at room temperature. So that's kind of like the butter that you have around the house. Now, unsaturated fats have double bonds, and whenever you have a double bond, like right here, you're going to have a kink in the phospholip or in the, um, the fatty acid chain. Um, this is like in plants and fish fats, vegetable oils. Um, you know, they're usually liquids at room temperature. So you have saturated and unsaturated fats. Now, phospholipids, phospholipids, if you remember, I used to draw phospholipids like this. I have a head and they'd have a tail. So here's the head. And here's the tail. Now, there's phospholipids are unique. I mean, are, are they hydrophobic or are they hydrophilic? And it's kind of kind of neat this way. The head is actually hydrophilic, which, if you remember, means it loves water. Okay. And the tail is hydrophobic, which means it is scared of water or fears water. So if you were to throw a hydro, if you were to throw a, a phospholipid into a container of water, it would end up landing with the, the leg standing up. The head would go toward the water and the tail would be fearful of the water. That's a unique property because it actually gives the ability to make membranes. You think about our membranes like down here in the bottom corner. Our plasma membrane is a bilayer, two layers. The heads point outside the cell, and the heads point inside the cell, which is both mo made mostly of water, and the tails point inward, which creates that layer that, that separates the inside from the outside. You know, that's very important for the survival of living things, how this plasma membrane forms from this phospholipid layer. Um, oh. The next group are steroids. Now, the thing about steroids are... They consist of four fused carbon chains. So you can look down here. One, two, three, four. And then something attached to it makes um, the structure a steroid. Cholesterol is one such steroid. And cholesterol is found in our plasma membranes. It actually gives it its rigidity or its fluidity, depending on how much or how little you have. That's why if you have a high cholesterol diet, it can actually change the uh, structure of your plasma membranes of your red blood cells. 
and cause them to get clogged. They don't become they can become less fluidy. And also, steroids are found in our sex hormones. Just by changing what is attached to those four um, carbon rings determines what the steroid is. Uh, and I've already mentioned this, but cholesterol, you know, is very important in animal cell membranes. And oftentimes, cholesterol is a precursor to sex hormones inside of animals. Uh, that's it for lipids. I hope that helps a little bit, and I will talk to you later.